Yes, and we have to begin with what's happening with oil right now. Price is spiking to 90 USD. The question is, is 90 USD here to stay? And what does this mean for the global central bank fight against inflation? Is it a material risk now? Hi, Dan. Well, it's, it's, it's actually been a material risk for a little while for us because um, uh, to, to answer your first question of whether $90 is here to stay, well, it probably is for as long as... Uh, OPEC sees fit to reduce supply because I guess it segues nicely from the comments that you made a few minutes ago regarding the lower probability of recession. If recession is now lower as a probability, that implies therefore that demand sort of stays high or higher. And if demand stays high in an environment where all supply is cut, then by definition, you'd expect the price to be somewhat sticky at these levels. So we think there's probably a good probability that all sort of remains elevated. Uh, the challenge on inflation is, is crystal clear for us because, uh, as I've mentioned before on, on, on these programs, uh, we at State Street actually look at a, an online uh, price uh, index called Price Stats, uh, and that has been flashing a very strong warning throughout the whole of August that energy prices and transportation prices are lifting prices more generally again. Uh, and if we are now in an environment where all prices are going to remain elevated, let's say for the balance of the year, then that upwards inflation pressure that emanates, frankly, from just the one sector, but from a very important sector, if energy prices remain high, inflation, the re-acceleration of inflation remains a clear risk as far as inflation and as far as policy is concerned. So unpack this for me. To what extent is 90 or 90 plus USD oil actually inflationary? Uh, well, you, you think of it in a couple of ways. Uh, if you think of it, first of all, in terms of the base effects, uh, now that's a statistical measure, obviously, but to the extent that from 2022, the, about the middle of the year onwards, all prices generally were weaker. What you're then looking at is a statistical comparison in, say, Q3, Q4, 2023, as opposed to Q3, Q4 last year, where by definition, you're just going to see a little bit more upside pressure on inflation. So that's the direct impact. I guess there's also the indirect impact, which is what central bankers are going to be more focused on. And this is something, again, that your program alluded to earlier, is that, well, headline rates are headline rates. Oil prices, food prices are generally what central bankers can't directly control. But if this feeds through into higher inflation expectations to the, in the balance of the year, then clearly some central banks are really going to have to rethink the, the pause uh, or indeed in some instances the easing that's actually priced in over rates over the next three to six months. So potentially here there's a, there's a direct impact, of course, in terms of how the numbers come out. But if this begins to feed through into other sectors and into expectations more generally, then we may be in a slightly different ballgame when it comes to rate expectations over the next three to six months. So it's got a real implications for central banks.